After that glorious appearance on Saturday Night Live, where he not only created a new telecommunication device, a picture of you listening to the President of the United States on peaker, speakerphone as he reveals peaker, speakerphone. Plus, was unanimously voted the greatest host to ever grace the SNL stage. Well, they, they probably think I'm the biggest jerk who's, who's ever been on the show. No, no, that would be Steven Seagal. Well, <laughs> Big Daddy Bubblegum is back again in the hosting role. Obviously, it would be impossible to surpass such a magnificent performance on Saturday Night Live, but we're just mere mortals using our tiny pea brains. We couldn't possibly understand the workings of an omnipotent god like Sensei Fatfolds. The great man made another attempt as a comedic host of a show called The Friday Night Project, hosted by Alan Carr, a jolly gay lad, finger him and, I'll wait. and Justin Lee Collins, a convicted girlfriend abuser, the show seemed a good fit for Seagal, as he and the woman abuser not only have a lot in common, but have a natural rapport. Have you missed me? So you gotta remember that accent. You've got to remember my accent. From Bristol? From Bristol. You know, because they've both been linked to abusing women and stuff. I definitely believe Portia de Rossi. She'd know what abusive scumbaggery looks like. She's been dating that f***ing evil cow Ellen for years. Thankfully, Big Papa Panda Tits is 1,000 times more affable in his second attempt at hosting a show, because Sensei Slippery Nips realized that being a serious douche all the time is not funny. <coughs> the crowd goes wild for our beloved hero. Steven Seagal! The Friday Night Project. You know for a fact that his gigantic ego loves every moment of that praise. I guarantee you he's got a heart on underneath that bed sheet he's wearing. Now we all know there are writers for this show, but let's not all pretend that Big Daddy Droopy d wouldn't be insisting he sounds like a hero whenever possible. He plays a humorous intro poking fun at other action heroes from his era. People have been asking me what happened to all the other action heroes. I love how he puts himself in that category automatically. He is a hero. Charlie's Angels are still kicking ass, but they've all gotten a little bit older and let themselves go just a little bit. I mean, dissing people for getting old and out of shape is, well, fair, fair, and not hypocritical when you're as svelte as Big Papa. And the Terminator has teamed up with someone even more determined than he is to destroy all human life. <laughs> Seagal getting all political and shit. I mean, the delivery wasn't great, but the joke was pretty funny, which he probably had no part of because it was written for him. And as you'd expect, they all kiss Sensei Scrotum and make his head even bigger. Regardless of what the haters out there would say, our savior is a successful, talent, a successful, rich, handsome. He is successful and rich. And nobody can change that. Thank you for noticing that. Thanks. Is it as cool being Steven Seagal as we think it is? It's, it's even cooler. <laughs> the fact that he answers like this tells me that he 100% bet both my nutsacks that he wrote this line. Are you really as good as they all say you are? Every once in a while. Tell me those words did not come from the mind of this great man. Now, what does it take to really ruffle Steven Seagal's feathers? Because I've seen virtually every single one of your films. And this line right here is all the proof necessary to see that Big Daddy Thunderthighs learn from his past experience and can actually be funny if he just lightens the f up. One of the things that rubbed my feathers when I when I hugged you guys just and you felt my balls and I thought that was a little bit off. <laughs> and again, rapid fire Big Daddy delivery. The man is on fire. You're a tough guy on screen, Seagull, but you don't want none of this. Oh, yeah. You don't want any of this. Oh, yeah. uh, well, you're right about that, actually. Now you were right. <laughs> and within the first five minutes of his appearance, he has smiled more than any time I can remember. And it is glorious. Uh, 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 uh. Can we all appreciate that Big Papa is basically nailing this straight out the gate? I mean, it may have butchered SNL, but by George, he's flipping the script on this shitty show. Is it true that you can kill someone with a finger? Yeah. No, you can, you can kill, can't you? I with one you, finger? You press a point on Let me tell you something, a lot of proctologists have killed a lot of people accidentally. <laughs> We also get the treat of seeing our master musician in his natural element. It's impossible to find any fault in the big man here. He's completely lovable, personable, and as always, obviously handsome. 
What do we do now? We need to go, we need to chill, maybe meditate before the gig. What, what I do yeah. before every gig is I sit in the room and I throw all you mother out. <laughs> and I stay in it by myself and gather my energy. And right on cue, there's the man we know. Before even seeing this footage or the answer, I know exactly what's going to happen. What is the sound of one hand clapping? Is it going to... Jay Goody's mum. Jay Goody's mum. What can we say? The man loves assaulting people. And once again, Big Papa doesn't disappoint with his backstage demands exactly what I thought they'd be, missing one key element. Stephen, I brought the fondant fancies and the mini chocolate fingers that you were talking about. The thing that I asked for, I asked for naked girls. Dancing naked girls. But pussies are nice. Yeah. I want you to take me someplace where I can find some drugs or some women. And this is exactly what I mean by Steven Seagal having oversight over what is said about him. Oh, Steven's amazing. He's an action movie legend. The lads create a little skit where Seagal continues with his pacifist mumbo jumbo he went through in the 90s, early thousands, refusing to kill anybody. This is embarrassing, guys. What's up with the guns? I mean, you guys are into camp, humor, not violence. I don't get it. Steven, you're a Hollywood action legend. Your fans want to see you kick a man's ass, not appreciate it. Killing those 90s thing, you know. Steven! And then again, another line that Big Papa nails perfectly and actually made me f***ing laugh out loud, I'm not gonna lie. Look at what you do that for? You know what, this is like royal Thai silk and I ain't f***ing around trying to get the blood out. <laughs> the lads have a bit of back and forth banter, which is cute, before Seagal runs out of breath and needs a moment. Yeah, I think that right about now we should take a break. Okay. Let's take a break. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because then we're going to have to... Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. let's mm -hmm. sit down. Now, Alan Carr carries a brunt of the comedic load in this little new skit, but for some reason, the only time I really find Big Papa amusing is when he swears. F***ing two f***ing f***ers at 15 motherfuckers and f***ed up. I guess it's a simple way of getting a laugh out of somebody. And I'm guilty of it too. He might not be the best with a dialogue delivery, but he is definitely putting some effort in this time around, and I for one respect that shit. Bird flu hit your fucking country again this week with 160,000 turkeys having to be culled. Again, I don't know why, but Big Daddy swearing is comedy gold to me. And then I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna fuck you. As you'd expect, Sensei Scrumptious nails a story about a big titted mother and daughter, and takes great interest in this story for research purposes. A busty, and I mean busty, busty mother and daughter who scooped 50 grand on deal or no deal were discovered to have starred in a pornographic film together. Oh. Yes! I mean, look how much fun he's having. How could he not love this giant sausage-fingered specimen? Especially with that luscious head of hair on his head. Cigalism is the way. Anyway, I need to move on. And now here's this segment that is based around some sensei trivia who knows the most about the guest host. And all I have to say to that is, if I was there, none of these flogs would stand a chance. Nobody knows more about this man than I do. And yes, that's a flex for some f***ing strange reason. Anyway, a racially diverse selection of UK celebrity hotties are brought onto the show at the request of Sensei Tubby Tits because he only surrounds himself in the finest trim of all races. I think we should turn this into a fun little game for the Segalians out there. Let's see how well you all know the man we worship and idolize with every fiber of our being. Without further ado, let's play along with our waddling warrior wizard, Big Daddy Donuts. What do I always carry with me? Now these people guess a bunch of stupid things that aren't really funny. Is it like a little Gucci clutch bag? Is it a photo of Chuck Norris and some uh, ceramic hair straighteners? Cat. I mean, who the f*** carries a cat around everywhere they go? He's not f***ing Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. Two seconds later. What do I always carry with me? A. Cookies. B. Drugs and women. C. Ashes of some dead spiritual fella. Or D. Anal lube. The answer is... The spirit of a 17th century Buddhist master named Chundrat Doje. Huh? What's his name? Chundrat Doje. That's right, he's carrying around the ashes of some mystical bloke. I mean, that doesn't mean that the other answers don't apply, but we should respect Sensei's final decision. Even if he does know how f***ing ridiculous this thing is, because he, and everyone else, quickly brush past this as if it's not the most absurd thing you've ever heard someone carting around. And you carry him with you? Yeah. Not like in an urn? 
Next, next, next. Okay. But again, I'm not a spiritual god, so I don't know shit. But even the two hosts, who are a flamboyant gay lunatic and a wife-beating wanker, think this is f***ing bonkers. Look at their faces. Complete the following line from one of my songs. Someone took me to a restaurant, I had to eat something fast, I ordered me some chicken and they gave me... Or I would expect most of you to know the answer to this one. Is it A. Cookies B. Drugs and women C. Alligator ass Or D. All of the above They gave me some ass. That's very close, but you have to say what kind of ass. What? Some, some ass. Some, some fine ass. <laughs> Her response was actually very close, given that he only dines on the finest young actresses' asses on the market below the age of 19. The answer was alligator ass. But now, you all know Seagal dines on alligator ass. Big Daddy takes a minute to affect a British accent that was pretty shit, but adorable nonetheless, and you gotta give him points for effort. That was my shitty attempt, so I can't really... Moving right along. <laughs> what did I do for Archbishop Desmond Tutu? A supplied him all of his cookies B bought drugs and women for him C provided security special tactical advice and all around special forces badass stuff D absolutely nothing they don't know each other now Gemma Atkinson rips out a legendary line as to what Seagal provided for Desmond Tutu at his ass Lucky she's extremely hot and sexy, so Seagal doesn't have to go over there and end her life. He just ignores her and moves along. Hey, I, I did some special security operations for him back when things were a little bit, you know, you know, apartheid, all that stuff, things was rough. Now for the record, I did a little bit of digging regarding this little chestnut, and this is what I found. On the unofficial Steven Seagal fan page, I found an alleged excerpt from an article where a professional bodyguard, Tom Muzilla, apparently claims he and Seagal had done some jobs together, including protecting old Tutu. But, I managed to track down the actual article and there is no mention of Seagal, other than this Musilla bloke being the bodyguard for him, and no Seagal in the photo with Archbishop Desmond Ballerina Tutu. Funnily enough, Musilla has a credit for the movie Under Siege, so if I was a conspiracy theorist, I'd say this bloke lied to make Seagal sound more awesome and in return, he got a bit part here and there and whatever else. Much like our old mate Gary Goldman, who originally said he worked with Seagal in the CIA, but only because Seagal promised him a bunch of stuff. Afterwards, he said it was all lies because their relationship fell apart. Who knows? Liars are gonna lie. I just lay it out for y'all to play it out. Anyway, Sensei Special Forces protected old Tutu. Now on to the next question. I hold an important position in my local community. Lollipop lady. <laughs> Do I look like a mother... Lady to you? A. Deflowerer of all virgin women. B. Chair tester to make sure it's comfortable for fat blokes. C. Hirer of stuntmen to walk, talk, stand and move. Or D. Pretend policeman. Official title, I am a deputy chief, which is uh, one under the sheriff himself. So you have the power to arrest people? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Imagine being arrested by Steven Seagal. That's right. We all know he is the law, even though... I used to be a police uh -huh. officer. Oh, yeah, that's true. But I don't care no. about the law. Once again, all other answers could still be valid, so keep that in mind. I do love how he clarifies that he is only one below the sheriff himself. Chuck Norris could only play a fake cop. Steven Seagal lived as a fake cop. Take that, Chucky boy. Furthermore, in my honor, it's been covered with dollars instead of sterling. Good luck, audience. Let's go do it. I mean, his delivery is horrible. He is literally just reading it without any flow, tone, or rhyme. I mean, I suck at it also, but that's just horrible. And I'm not a Hollywood movie star. Then there's just a weird segment where they cover him in money, and he randomly assaults people that come up to him. No idea what the f point of that was, but anyway. He does really love doing that little stand with his hands to the side. It's like a power move. Such a power move. I'm just going to pause it there so we can analyze the look on Big Daddy's face. We are at the 25 minute mark of the show, and it's obvious he's had enough of these two British twats. He's ready for a cookie, some nookie, and a line of coke, and not necessarily in that order. That was a nice touch, man. That's some cool.
cool shit. Now this segment is one I've covered before where Seagal pretends to be teaching people how to move objects with their minds, but it's really a prank show. I'll keep it brief. He rubs and caresses some young lady at the start, totally unnecessarily. This four-eyed doofus will be the one being tricked. There are magnets underneath to make him think he has telepathic powers, or telekinetic, whatever. Like Professor X from X-Men. Or, as Cigar will inform you, that we call in Chinese Bahue. He gave the whole audience blood capsules to make the kid on stage think that they were vomiting blood because of his powers, and not because of Cigar's potent farts. You can watch that full episode here if you want. Everyone laughs at the end and all go away to eat cookies and snort cocaine together. <laughs> then we get a fun little Q&A from the audience. I'm sure none of these questions were scripted or planned ahead of time and are 100% authentic and random. I just wonder how I mold myself into a, an actual love god like you. What's <laughs> <laughs> this? <laughs> so the kids do, that's what I do now. If this guy wasn't told to ask this question, then the alternative is that he genuinely asked this question himself and should be locked away in a basement. He thinks lovemaking is something akin to Mr. Miyagi's teachings. Daniel san! Daniel san! Alright, come on, give me a break. I mean, look at her. Telling me she wasn't handpicked by Sensei Seagal to get up and ask this f***ing question. I salute you, Seagal, you f***ing legend. Stephen, you're a very attractive man, and a little bit of a heartthrob as well. Have you always found it so easy to attract the ladies? Yup! No, 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 no. I stand corrected. These questions definitely are not scripted. This hot lady genuinely stood up and asked the pubic haired spiritual wombat if he's always found it easy to attract women, implying she thinks he is attractive. And Big Daddy turns it around with some charm and comedic genius by announcing he's thinking of switching teams and crossing swords. A little broke back bullshito. Well, have you always found it so easy to attract the ladies? Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> ladies seem to like me once in a while, but to be honest with you, <clears throat> I've been like having such a good time with Justin and Alan, I'm strongly thinking about going gay. That's actually pretty funny. Such humility and modesty. It's a nice little twist. Chagall tries to improvise and give a message to this guy's mother. Can you do something really, really nice and romantic for my mum at home? I could say some kind words to her here. Is she married? Yes, she is, yeah. Is she happily married? Yes, she is. <laughs> And it went as well as you'd expect as he starts rambling, because when there isn't a script involved, it can be difficult if you don't have a brain that functions fast enough to react. This happens. Margaret, wherever you are, let me tell you something, man. Love is about beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And, uh, you know, if you love your man and if you stand by your man, just like, you know, know that he's the most beautiful and handsome, dashing, valiant son of a bitch out there. Right. Okay, now here's where it gets brilliant. Next, Seagal has to go to the audience and pick someone that looks like an evil villain from his films. Just keep that in mind before we see who he chooses. Steven Seagal, we want you to pick the person that you think looks most like an evil baddie from one of your films. Actually, let's just have a quick little quiz to see how well you know him. Did Sensei Seagal choose A. Someone that actually looks like a villain B. Some disabled person, so he seems caring C. A man that is more handsome than himself, or D, a hot brunette with ample bosom. If you guess D, well then you are completely right. What's your name? Charmaine. Alright, come on down. Charmaine looks really evil. Can we all appreciate how Big Daddy is nothing if not consistent? He likes the brunettes it seems, and with the ample bosom. The game itself is quite boring, so we'll skip ahead to a game where Seagal will finish a sentence that has been read, and the others try and guess the same answer he wrote. I will read out a phrase which might appear in a classic action film, but with the end of the sentence missing. You and your panellists must fill in the blanks. And each time a panellist answer matches yours, you score one point. The ninja burst into the room. Quick as a flash, Stephen ripped off his head and blankety blank. Okay, Steve, get writing, panelists. Please get writing. Okay, Stephen. The ninja burst into the room. Quick as a flash, Stephen ripped off his head and... 
You're saying pissed down his throat. <laughs> pissed down his throat. Genius answer, Big Daddy. I thought he would have gone with shit down the throat, but I'll take it. The scenario was, Stephen grabbed the bad guy's gun and threw him to the ground. Try that again, and I'll tear off your balls and feed them to you. <laughs> I knew he was going to shove them down his throat or make him eat it, but I was really hoping he was going to say stick him up his ass. That would have been more of a Seagal boss move from the 80s. That young attractive lady that was randomly chosen by Seagal wins a prize. He ends up nailing the hot white and black British broads, plus the lady that asked the question previously, plus the contestant, all at once. Why? Because he's Steven Seagal, and you never f***ing will be, mate. Anybody who doubts that the great man is not only the greatest martial artist, but also the greatest personality and charismatic god to ever exist can now suck a fart. He nailed it like he always does. He was surrounded by hot women. Standard. He assaulted some people. Standard. He was revered and worshipped by people, definitely standard. And more importantly, he showed he isn't a complete, 100% rigid flog that can be self-deprecating for the sake of humour. Not completely, but a little bit. Anyway, what did you think, Sigolians? What was your favourite segment with Big Papa Pin Cushion? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. Alright my friends, the next two videos will be about stupid idiotic Australians to balance out that US video I made which you can watch here. And then we are back to some more Bushido Legends, Bushido Bandits Part 2 coming soon. Until then, my friends, always try and keep your waza positive. Embrace big-breasted brunette women who throw themselves at you, but above all, stay awesome. Peace, Legends. I'm a monster with my sorrow.